So exactly one year ago, at time of filming this video, uh, I made my first video on this channel about the Sony ZV-E10 and I built it up into a big cinema rig. Now, it was very over the top, it was very extravagant. You know, we used cinema lenses that were $1,300, $1,400 and, you know, matte boxes and big rails, all the kind of stuff, and built it up into the biggest rig that I could um, in the best way that I thought would work with this camera. Um, and actually, it ended up kickstarting this channel and did really well, but I thought I should revisit that video and ask the question of what kind of rig could I build for this camera on a much lower budget. So if you own the Sony ZV-10 and a decent lens, how much do you have to spend to build something up into a nice big rig? Um, and I found that the best budget that I was able to find to build a, a, a good rig was around $500. And I ended up with this. This is the best kind of rig that I could build for under $500. Now, obviously at the moment, if you're watching this when this came out, um, this is around Black Friday. You know, there's a lot of online deals and currently all of these parts total up to around $430, depending on the deal that you can get on each piece. Um, but normally, um, outside of the deals, they land about 500 bucks. And I think $500 for a camera this price is a really good place to land. So let's break it down and build it back together piece by piece and talk about what pieces I used. So for starters, we're gonna strip it all the way back to the camera and the lens. Now this budget of $500 is obviously taking into account that you already own the camera and the lens, right? We're not factoring that into $500 because the camera costs more than $500. So if you have the camera and the lens, everything else to build it up into the rig should cost around $500 or less depending on prices, they, they fluctuate a lot. Now the first thing that you're gonna need for any cinema rig is a decent cage. The cage we're gonna be using for this one is by a company called Left Photo. It's got this nice big wooden handle on the side. It's not quite as comfortable as the small rig version, but it has a couple of features that are going to work really well for this rig. So let's go ahead and we'll attach the camera to the cage and you're gonna to wanna to take your lens off or if you've got a really small lens, it'll fit on just fine. And um, now this cage has one screw and that goes into the bottom of the camera. And, and there we have it connected to the camera. And I, I think it looks quite nice. So we'll go ahead, get that sensor covered up, get a lens on there. Um, now, one of the things I really like about this cage is it actually has a NATO rail built into the top. Now, other camera cages do have NATO rails built in on the top, but they're, this one is actually accessible from the side, so you can slide it on all the way, which a lot of handles require that. Um, and it has an Arca Swiss plate on the bottom. Now, the small rig one also has the Arca Swiss plate on the bottom, but. I thought for saving money, this this cage is slightly cheaper than the small rig one, and the top handle we're gonna use requires a NATO rail, so this means we don't have to buy a NATO rail. Um, it can just attach on the top there. Um, but overall, I think it's a really nice cage. I think it fits really well. I think it looks great on the camera. It adds a nice sort of chunky side handle, and the side handle is a lot more substantial than that that you would get with the small rig one. It's very comfortable. So next we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna attach our top handle. So for the top handle, we're gonna use this. This is the Nitsi Stinger, little Stinger, Stinger Mini, the small version, uh, and this is the second version, so the Mark II. Um, and it's a nice little hand, it's, it's got a NATO attachment, um, and on the front here I've added um, a little cold shoe mount for our monitor that we're gonna be adding in a little while. So again, we've got our NATO rail on the top of the camera, and this can slide directly onto the side. So we've got that nice and centered, and that gives us a nice top handle for the camera. Um, and it looks pretty good. It's nice and light and it's pretty affordable as far as camera handles go. It's around $30, which I think is great. I think it's really good value. Now in the front of this handle, we're gonna to want to add our monitor. Now I picked up what I thought to be probably the cheapest monitor that you can sort of get on Amazon. And that's the Portkey's PT5 Mark II. It's a nice little monitor. It's very small. It's like a five inch monitor. Very simple. It's got a nice touch screen to it. Um, lots of features that you can use, you know, focus assist and peaking and magnification, all these kinds of things. Um, so it's a great little monitor uh, and it is also really small and very affordable. It's only $125 new and um, which I think is a fantastic price um, for a decent monitor, especially one with touchscreen capabilities. And then we have something that looks a lot like this um, and this is a nice little place to start. You, can, you could go ahead and attach your HDMI cable directly into here, put a battery on the back and you got a nice little handheld rig here and um, I think would work pretty well. But we're obviously going to add a few more things. We need uh, battery options and we're going to need uh, a couple other small accessories just to make it a little bit more substantial. So in our last big rig, we added everything to a 15 millimeter rail base plate, and um, which gave us the option to add follow focuses if we want, or lens support systems, all those kinds of things. We're not gonna be using any of that, and um, that ends up getting a little bit more expensive. And instead of using big cinema lenses, we're just gonna rely on autofocus. That makes everything a little bit more simple, um, and actually gives us a couple more options of what we can do. So at, 
obviously recommend having an autofocus lens for this. And instead of using a 15 millimeter rail base plate, we're going to use a simple cheese plate and we're gonna be attaching a few accessories to this. Now this is a great little cheese plate. It's very simple, it's small, um, and it doesn't take up very much space, but it's got a really nice amount of mounting points on this that you can use um, to, to attach any amount of accessories. Um, now in theory, you could add 15 millimeter rails onto this just you know with a couple of adapters but we're not going to be using rails in this build. The first thing we're going to want to attach is this. This is a Nitsi uh, V-mount plate. So in previous rigs, like the rig I built for the Sony X6700, which you're watching right now, I used the Nitsi V-mount base plate with all of the ports on it, you know, USB-C, DTAP ports, and DC ports. This is basically the same thing, but with none of the smart features, none of the ports on it. It's just a, a basic, um, mounting system for a V-mount battery. So you can't attach any cables to this, but it comes with a couple of mounting points. So it's got two nice little mounting points on the bottom here. And we're gonna be attaching that um, in through uh, this bottom hole on the cheese plate. Um, so on the on the bottom of the cheese plate, we're gonna to want to put two, uh, the two screws that come with the Nitsi V-mount um, uh, plate. Put that through the through hole there, um, as you can see right here. It's gonna go to those, and that's gonna to attach to the bottom of the uh, of the Nitsi base plate. Get that lined up, get that attached, and it'll look something like this. It's a little right angle piece, um, and this basically, the camera is gonna sit here, battery goes on the back. Now, one of the problems with the Sony ZV-10 when you're attaching V-mount batteries, and actually with the last rig, I didn't use V-mount batteries, I went with NPF batteries. One of the problems is if typically whenever you're attaching a camera to a rig with the V-mount battery, you're gonna wanna have the screen flipped out unless it cannot flip out. So you're gonna wanna have your, your monitor sitting out, uh, and then that sort of folded across like that, so you can still act access the, the, the screen. Um, the problem with the ZV-10 is it's so small that if you had this centered up and lined up with the camera or lined up with a set of rails, the screen will not fit around the battery. It's gonna end up sticking out to the side, which is really annoying. So what we're actually gonna do is we're gonna use the uh, Arca Swiss plate that's on the bottom of this cage and attach it to a little Arca Swiss clamp. This is a small little uh, Arca Swiss clamp with a sort of thumb screw that you can use to tighten and loosen it. And, and we're gonna attach that directly to this sort of L bracket that we have going on. Now we only have enough space to add one screw, so we're gonna attach it right up against this, uh, this uh, V-mount plate. And that way it's not going to sort of swivel around. If you look underneath, and um, we have a nice sort of little lining up of screws right in here. You can attach a quarter 20 thread directly into the, uh, the Arca Swiss plate through the bottom of the cheese plate. And then we have something that just looks like this. Very simple, little sort of L bracket, V-mount battery goes in the back and the camera is gonna go on to the, the Arca Swiss plate. Now this little L bracket piece that you're gonna be mounting your camera to, total will cost about 50 to $60, depending on the prices that you get this. Um, and the reason we're gonna use this is basically if we open up our lens, let's go ahead and we'll attach our battery. Um, I'm gonna come back and tell you about the battery here in a little bit, but we'll put our V-mount battery on the back. If I were to line this uh, camera up to be totally centered and get it attached, so if we were using a rail system, you kind of have to have it centered, the monitor will not close. It kind of sticks out like this, which is not ideal, right? It's 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 not, it doesn't feel safe. If you push on that, it feels like it's just gonna break. So that's not ideal. That's why I went with NPF batteries in the last build because they're narrower. But because we're not using rails and we're not really worried about everything being uh, sort of perfectly centered, what we can do is we can actually loosen this and slide the camera to be actually slightly off center. So as you can see, the lens is not perfectly in line with uh, the bottom of this, um, nor with the back. But as you can see, our monitor is able to sit out to the side uh, and we can control where the camera sits on this on this base plate system to allow it to sort of fit uh, and, and work around the battery. The battery I'm gonna be suggesting is kind of this one. We'll come back to that in a little second. But this is like, this is a NPF battery by Andy Cine. It is the 95S. What I'm actually gonna be recommending is either this one, the 95S, which is around $100, or the 95. And the 95 is basically the exact same thing, but it doesn't have the variable DC port or the USB-C port. So it's only got two D-taps and a USB. Now that's actually plenty for this rig, and it's a whole lot cheaper. It was actually on sale at the start of the Black Friday deals for like 50 bucks, which I think is the cheapest I've ever seen a V-Mount battery go for. And this thing has been great. I've been using this a whole lot and it's been super solid. Um, it's very small, very compact. It's about the same size as the uh, KMTV ones and it's gonna pop right on the back here really simply. Um, and there we have already a great looking rig. So total cost around here in 
excluding the camera and the lens, you're talking about $300. Now the only other things we're gonna add is we've got a, a few cables to put together. We're gonna add a matte box on the front uh, and then I'm gonna give you an option for um, a left handle. Um, I don't think it's necessary if you want to cut out and drop the budget a little bit, you don't need to worry about the left side handle. Now there are three main cables that we're gonna be needing. That is this, and this is a very small, um, it's like a six inch USB-A to USB-C cable. So that's going to plug into the top of the Andy Cine battery at the USB port. And then the USB-C cable is gonna go into the camera. Um, so this is gonna act as power delivery straight from the battery. And um, so we're not gonna be using dummy batteries into here because they're a little bit more expensive. This USB-C cable is like $6. And most of the dummy batteries for this camera are about 30 or 40. So this is a much more cost-effective way of powering your camera. Now we are gonna use a dummy battery for the monitor. And we're also gonna need an HDMI cable. Now thankfully this monitor actually comes with an HDMI cable uh, and a micro HDMI cable. So you don't need to purchase one of those separately. I lost mine, so I had to purchase another one, but um, this does come with one. It also comes with uh, this monitor mount that I have attached here. So it's a great little kit, comes with a little hard case, great little monitor um, and works really well. So it'll come with an HDMI cable and uh, and the monitor mount. Now I also have a DTAP to NPF battery cable here um, and it's coiled. And I kind of started to do this thing where I will sort of wrap these two cables together, the HDMI cable and the coiled cable, I'll put the HDMI through the coil and it kind of acts as one cable, just sort of keeps cable management pretty neat for me. So we'll go ahead and we will um, add our NPF battery to the back and plug the HDMI cable into the monitor and then we have the other end. So obviously the DTAP cable is gonna go into the, uh, into the V-mount battery and the HDMI cable into the camera. And so with the touch of cable management, we've got a nice little rig here. We've got a V-mount battery, top handle, monitor, um, and the camera lens, everything is powered from this one battery on the back the DTAP port and a USB-C cable. And the nice thing about doing this setup as well is that if I'm filming for a long period of time, once this battery dies, the monitor will turn off, but the camera won't. The camera will keep recording and, and because it's got a battery already inside the camera. So that means I know as soon as this screen dies, oh, my battery's dead, got to unplug those, put another one in, the camera never actually stops recording. So if I've got on a tripod or something, I don't need to worry about, you know, me, the whole shot, being ruined because it cut off halfway through. Now next we are gonna add a matte box. This is not necessary. Obviously here, we've got a really nice little rig. I think this will work great. And if you want to really go on a budget, again, I think this is around three, $350 for this rig currently, which I think is very, very affordable. We're gonna add a couple more things. Um, we're gonna add our matte box here. Now a matte box accomplishes two things. It allows us to, um, shade the lens from any unwanted lens flares and um, because it's got this big sort of top flag um, on the front of the matte box itself. This one is by Small Rig. It's currently on sale for about 50 or $60 um, and it's got this nice big flag on the front. Now what this allows us to do is basically if light's coming in really harshly from one angle, we can tilt this to block the, block the light um, and that way we're not gonna get any lens flares that we don't want. The other thing is it looks good. I mean, I, we can all say that it has a lot of function, but there is something to the significance of a rig that has the matte box on the front. It just adds a little bit of something more substantial to the rig. Um, and it just, it looks nice. So if you're into that sort of thing, go ahead and get one. If you don't wanna get one, don't worry about it. And then the last thing we're gonna add is a little side handle. This is a very simple, um, small wooden side handle. I think this one's by Small Rig. They're not very expensive, they're about, 18 to $20 and um, it's just got a couple of screws and that's gonna attach directly to the side of our cage. Now it's gonna go on here. Um, one thing you're gonna wanna be careful of if you're buying a handle, obviously buy whichever handle you want. I really like wooden handles, I think they look great. And um, you can get some really low profile ones and um, just like this sort of thing, which goes straight onto the cage. Unfortunately with most cages for the ZV-E10, there's not a lot of space beside these mounting points and these cables. So you're gonna want something that sits out from the cage just a little bit to protect those cables. We'll go ahead and attach this handle. And here we have a fantastic rig. We've got a nice big handle on the other side. This just gives us a really nice grip that we can hold the camera with. Um, it's not the prettiest handle in the world and it sits quite far out from the camera, but you know what? I think it, I think it does a pretty good job. We've got a nice big handle on the other side. This just feels pretty good. And I think for $500, we've got a really cool looking rig. Again, building a rig is not compulsory. It's not necessary. It doesn't do a whole lot for the image of your camera, but it's fun. And if, if you're wanting to build one on a budget, 500 bucks can get you something like this. Play around though and look online because there's always different types of deals, always different types of prices. Prices for these parts vary all the time. Um, you know, today this is going, this whole thing costs about $430. Last week it was closer to 500. So 
keep an eye on things. If there are cheaper monitors that come out, get those. If there's um, better matte boxes that suit your needs, get those. If there's another cheaper battery, like instead of the 95S, get the 95. It'll do the exact same thing for you and it's gonna be half the price. All these sorts of options. Look around, do some digging, hop on Amazon and, and shop around a little bit to build your own rig. You wanna make it unique. You wanna build it in a way that works for you so that it's kind of your own design, your own fun thing. Um, it's a lot of fun. If you haven't built a camera rig before, especially with these small mirrorless cameras, it's a lot of fun. There's a lot of people tend to comment on my videos being like, this is pointless. It's fun. I enjoy it. Um, and uh, if you know, if you got all these sort of parts lying around, you get to play around and build your rigs and do it in whichever way that you want. Have fun with your gear. That's what it's for. You spent money on it. You may as well have some fun with it. And if you're interested in any of these parts, they're all currently on sale. If you're watching this when this came out on Amazon, I'll have links down below. Those are affiliates. They help out the channel um, and allow me to do more of this kind of stuff. And if you've enjoyed this video, hit the like button, drop a comment down below. I want to hear your thoughts and I would love it if you'd consider hitting the subscribe button as we continue to build this channel. I appreciate all of you for watching and I hope that you have a wonderful day.